doing these semi-abstract pieces. Um, so yeah, color, color and abstraction and I talk a lot about uh, color palettes and why choosing certain colors with lots of people, and I've, I've noticed there's a, I don't know, in contemporary painting, painting for making, whatever, um, there's, a, there's a big sort of um, excitement about very acidic, warm colors and very, like, earth tone colors, yeah. and you can see it sort of in, like, mainstream stuff that's contemporary, but you can also see it in a lot of fine art. And I've had a lot of conversations with teachers about this and sort of like really high toned, uh, you know, acidic, like neon colors with very muted, tinted, neutral colors. You can see it, you know, in like commercial, you know, sweatshirts and like great shoes, you know. And I feel like that's all sort of in us. It just comes out in this very organic way, sort of an advertisement, you know. I don't know if you guys feel that way about. It's so like the, the you guys know the word Peter Peter Henry mm -hmm. abstract guy. Do you know this word? Well, like if you look at his like run of work over the years, it's like as like these neon colors started to come out, like he started to use them. So there's like organics in the seventies and the eighties, mm -hmm. and there's like acrylic and neons and sparkles, and it's just so interesting how like we have all of these colors at our fingertips, and yeah, like how. To improve how that's well, if we're all kind of looking at the world around us, which includes media, cars, you know, magazines, mm -hmm. and the color choices that these people are making, right. it will influence us in the work that we present, yeah. whether we know it or not. I mean, I think car color choices is something that I mean, people study this stuff, you know, mm -hmm. the trends in color, and if you notice colors of cars, they evolve. Right. You know, well, they come back and forth. You're, you know, I mean, there's a there's a dialogue, right? So it's it's in part that we're looking, and it's also that we're pushing it out into the world. So mm -hmm. we're speaking, so there's a little both of that. I think color, like as a curator, color was one aspect of what made the work alive, but then, you know, her process and the way that it grows out, and right. it's, it's physically takes up on the, it's a, another aspect of being alive. So mm -hmm. it's just sort of, for me, it's, you know, yeah, Amy's pieces, they grow that way, and then if you look over here at Phyllis's, it's like visually they're growing, so it's almost like, you know. And, yeah, yeah, optically, through the color itself, they're mm -hmm. pulsating. I think also there's a common sort of space, and making space within color, lack of color, tonality, mm -hmm. you know, physical space, um, you know, trying to create three dimensions out of the flat surface. Mm -hmm. surface. Um, you know, I have very little choice in a lot of ways. Um, I've added color. I did, you know, I've done like encaustic on the paper. It just doesn't seem to, um, it doesn't lend anything to it, interestingly enough. Um, these are white bleach blacks, but the ones with natural are almost the strongest ones that I have. And that is even like harder that time of money. So I think that in some ways, some of the colors are bright, some of the colors are muted, some of the colors are like fluorescent. Um, I don't have as much color, you know, in fact, different well, settings. It's really subtle. There is a right. lot of color right. in, in terms of how the, the layers of history of dust and, and whatever, and other threads and whatever it's picked up historically by being in the factory. So right. there's a lot of color in the pieces if you look at it closely. Um, that reverberates and, you know, there's different things and some different tonalities in there that go with some of these pieces. Talks to them, but right. and creating that space within us. I always think about my color because I after I do the things I like, wow, it's really bright. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not that I intend to be. I don't set out trying to make the most blinding painting. But I think sometimes, in a way, it's almost a way to get away from nature too. It's a synthetic. And then also I'm also drawn by the way the color pops. The bright colors kind of pop. So it's almost like I'm seduced by the color. Well, I find that interesting because also I've been a number of years ago, I was in India, and I remember you know, purchasing, or actually someone gave me, you know, um, some color and a number of like different things coming on these little bags, and little baggies that are tied up, you know, and I have all these things that I look at. 
And you think that those colors that are on cars that are neon, you know, that's a new for us. That comes from the earth. So, you know, so, so I, I think that there's an interesting dialogue there, and mm -hmm. like a conversation there anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, not to disagree by any, any way, um, only that it almost is just both. Mm -hmm. Um, I've knew, I mean, there's actually a number of different things I'd like to pick up on, but um, I think, first of all, uh, I sense a certain reluctance to be balkanized by gender, which I think is probably right. You don't kind of resist the idea of, well, we're all women artists, so what that way happens? Um, but at the same time, tomorrow is International Women's Day. <laughs> and, uh, yes. and I noticed that somehow this is maybe not as celebrated in the United States as it is as it would be in Canada for some reason. Maybe I'm wrong about that. <laughs> but um, the, the gallery that I first started working at, um, every Women's Day we would have, I mean it was started by, uh, by a feminist group that were sick of the old boys network back in the 70s and so on. And so they, they made a policy that every year they would have a show of, you know, around International Women's Day that would have women as a, as a subject, object, whatever. Like they would, they would have something to do. Either it was deliberately feminist with a political message or it was just had something to do. Um, and I wonder how then to reconcile those two things. How do we, because certainly International Women's Day is, I think we would probably all agree that's a good thing. We ought to be sort of recognizing that there are lots of gender inequities and various things. Um, and yet at the same time, we kind of don't want to be identified, well, I, I certainly don't want to be, but you probably don't all want to be identified as sort of like women artists in, in a certain kind of way, right? You want to be your own. Right? So how do we, how then do, do women act politically vis-a-vis -vis their art? Or maybe that's just an open question or food for thought. I don't well, I don't know. I actually feel that by creating art and exhibiting it and being a woman artist, I'm doing what I need to do. But I'm not to say that there there can't be artists that are feminists and want to have that lens. Like that's that's what they're interested in and that's what they want to project. Um, but I guess maybe I need to rephrase. Um, is the is the policy of my gallery, my old gallery back in Canada that I'm speaking of, is that outdated now? Does it need to keep doing that policy? I'd love for you to disagree. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> I see you <laughs> 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 No, I think it's outdated. I'll disagree. <laughs> I mean, when I was an undergraduate, they had the Women Caucus for the Arts, and I was like, what is that? Like, why do they have a separate group for the women? There's no men's caucus for the arts. Well, that's everyone else. Well, that's right. It's not labeled the men's caucus, but that's, that's the way they hang together. And they do right, but, but and can we do this without a caucus? Do we have to have our own group in order to be... But if you don't have traditions, then you lose traditions, right? So if we if we don't bring it up, if we don't you know speak to it and bring and even if it's if it's to say that this we shouldn't do it maybe you know but but if we don't talk about it at all and just let it be, then it just disappears. So I sort of think even though I still want to make my work the way I want to make it, I don't want to make it as anything other than an artist maybe first and then. And that woman, but I still want the game for it. I think it's still nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that, but I.